Hey, hey everybody, this is Jonathan Schrantz, and I did it! I finally got to play the Bosman Palotnik Double Pond Gambit! So I've been saying on my Twitch stream, I'm going to keep playing this way against the Sicilian until I finally get to play this Gambit, so I'm happy to report back. I've got it on the board, it is possible to obtain. It's not very common, but the opening that I chose here is actually a very interesting option for anybody that's looking for a weapon against the Sicilian, something that might be able to surprise players, a lot of the games are actually a really quiet game, but I've been doing really well with this idea of bishop to e2 and only now pawn to c3. The main way of achieving this position, of course, is after c3. Knight f6, bishop to e2. Uh, there's no real point to starting with e2, but I just kind of like throwing the opponents off, playing something a little goofy, and getting this position anyway. But here we are, and it's a very interesting position. The idea of c3 is obviously that we just want to, at some point, play d4. Maybe we're going to play h3 to prevent this pin first, um, but in a lot of occasions, we just play c3, d4, and we're saying we want the huge center. So black, for his part, first of all, must avoid trap number one. It's just kind of a beginner trap. But actually, I have already achieved this against two 2300s, but yeah, watch out for this one. A lot of people might just fall for trap number one. But if they manage to know that this is a little bit of a poison pun here, what they might do is they can decide either to get on with the business, and I'm not going to go too much into the theory. Uh, I'll probably make a separate video about the theory of this opening. Just let me know in the comments below if that's something you'd like to see. Or they block this diagonal, which prevents our queen check. So, for example, just to give you a brief overview, if something like g6, black just says, I'm going to get on with my life, I'm going to play bishop g7 and castle, white here can castle, and after bishop to g7, you have two interesting choices. The main weapon that strong players, including Magnus Carlsen, it seems like the top choice is bishop to b5 check, so this is definitely a move worth checking out. There's also another simple plan that I've been doing well with, which is just rook to e1, with the idea that if they castle, you play bishop to f1, and perhaps after something like this, you're actually going to start with h3 to prevent bishop to g4, and then you play for d4 and you try to get the big center. Uh, it is possible to even play d4 right away, and this also leads to some interesting complications after, you know, d4, bishop g4, but if you want to avoid these, you can start with h3. There's a lot of interesting ways of playing this position. It's not even necessarily required to know a ton of theory, just if you know the main idea is to play for d4, uh, you should actually be able to do quite well with this opening. Now, on the other hand, they might play something like knight b to d7, and this is now making a threat on the e-pawn. So if they play a move like this, what they're saying is, I'm blocking this diagonal so that I actually make a threat. This is now going to require a slightly slower approach. There's some weird, sophisticated moves. You can play queen to c2 to defend it. I've just been playing pawn to d3 with the idea of slow playing the position. And no matter what black does, maybe they'll play b6, maybe they'll play g6. You can follow the same plan. You can castle, you can play rook e8, bishop f1, and maybe play for d4. There's also ideas of slow playing it. Maybe this knight will go to c4 one way or another, with or without a4. And you can play a closed position, which is something that a lot of Sicilian players are probably not ready for. And there's just a, there's a lot of room in this opening to explore and play different unique positions that a lot of people will not be ready for. However, the interesting line occurs after knight to c6, which is a very common choice, and this might possibly lead to the gambit that we're looking for. So black has indeed blocked this diagonal, trying to make the threat of taking on e4, but here we can play the move pawn to d4. And the opponent took right away. Again, we have similar traps. So if they do end up taking on e4, we can, uh, we can now punish black by playing the move pawn to d5. And no matter where this knight moves, eh, we're going to have this same trap. So something like this would be impossible, which is why my opponent decided to take on d4. After I took back, black took on e4. And this has been the problem for me. Every time I reach this position, which I get quite often... Uh, my opponents have been playing pawn to d5, and we might get a little bit of the, the kids playing in the background, but uh, this keeps happening, and this is really not even a problem for white. You can play here pawn to e5, and after knight to e4, simply just get castled. And something like this is just a very nice, pleasant position for white. I, what I've noticed is in a lot of human games, humans have tried to remove this knight with ideas of putting this knight on d2. Computer always puts the knight on c3 and says, if you take this, it's not even a big deal. So uh, there's a lot of ways of playing this, but this is a, a comfortable space advantage for white, but it's a very playable variation. 
Anyway, this is what we're looking for. We're looking for knight takes e4. Black has just said, you know, I shut down this diagonal so I could take your pawn, and black goes for it. Black just takes right away. Pawn to d5 is the main idea. So now if the knight moves, maybe we're going to have queen to a4 again. But black has this cunning plan in mind, queen to a5. So this is a check that does ask white some serious questions. But you can actually just play the move that you would want to play, knight to c3, which is offering another pawn. So my opponent did go for it, decided to take here after b takes c3, uh, knight to e5. There's yet another trap. If they do end up taking here, uh, there's actually more traps here than I realized. If they do end up taking here, there's bishop to d2. And now there's two pieces hanging, so this will just win some material for white. So instead, the opponent played knight to e5. This is obviously the, the main idea. I did take here, and the opponent took on e5. There's a very interesting line. The greediest line for black is queen takes f3, and now you can play here. And you can even get this crazy variation where you're down three pawns, but if you put this on the computer, it'll be somewhere close to 0, 0, 0, completely equal. Uh, white actually has a lot of good moves. I think maybe the strongest is rook to b1. Rook to c1 is also an interesting idea. But a big problem for black is white is actually about to just become this, <laughs> this coil. He's about to spring forward. Moves like bishop to f3 and taking here is going to lead to a lot of uh, interesting complications. I won't get too much into it, um, but I, I will probably make a video on it in the future. You're supposed to play weird moves. It's something like either e5 or f6. You're supposed to play some weird stuff. I think so a6 loses, g6 loses. We can kind of explore it just a little bit. Something like this, I believe, runs into bishop to f3 where let's pretend we get really, really greedy. Something like taking here is supposed to be really good because it's really, really difficult for black to actually develop these pieces. Uh, you can't really play a move like this due to bishop to g5. And, uh, you know, all of a sudden there's, there's going to be a lot of issues here. Our next move might just be queen to f3, which threatens not only this f pawn, but also coming in here with check. It can get very, very dangerous. Um, another idea is that if they try to play something like g6, this also can get into a lot of danger. Uh, just something like this, I believe, is right. Maybe rook to e1 is also a good idea. But black is going to be forced to make a lot of concessions. The, the king is going to be stuck in the center of the board for a long time. And it can get crazy. It can get complicated, but it's just it's a really weird, wacky variation where even though you're, you're down so much... It's, it's very, very difficult to play black objectively. So anyways, that was a very interesting option that could have happened in this position. Instead, I got castled and the opponent played g6. And uh, I think actually, if you switch this over to the Lee Chess database, this is actually the most common move, um, pawn to g6. But uh, already, I was kind of on my own now. I didn't really know this. We'll keep well, we'll keep, the, we'll keep the Lee Chess database on so we can have kind of an idea of a lot more moves. I decided to play queen to b3. My idea is not only to just defend all my pawns, but I'm also introducing the idea of bishop to b5 into the equation, where if I give this check right away, it's going to be difficult for black, because if you, if you do block, I can always take and then maybe grab this b pawn. So the opponent played pawn to a6, and here I played rook to e1. And what I'm trying to gear up for, I'm trying to get ready, is that whenever the opponent is just about to castle, I'm going to try to make his life a little bit more difficult. So I play bishop to a3, trying to keep my, my bishop aimed at this e pawn. So if the opponent castles, I'm going to be able to grab it. The opponent decides to try to protect the pawn. This seems very reasonable. But now rook a to d1, and I already have a very overwhelming position. I think the opponent is in the danger zone here. I'm now just gearing up. My idea is I'm going to play pawn to d6. The opponent does get castled. Uh, it's hard to suggest anything better, but now d6 comes and it appears that black is going to just be losing some material. So he did take, I took back. Now the queen moved away. I, I threw in an in-betweener here. I think I should probably just grab that rook. I don't think I played this, this move very accurately. I went here and then I only now realized, oh wait, after the queen moves, my opponent is going to have this idea of bishop to e6 into the equation. So maybe it wasn't the best, but uh, it was actually hard for the queen to go anywhere. It's not super easy. Maybe b5 can be played or something, but uh, I was able to get this. Now I realize my, my rook, uh, there's this threat coming in, so maybe I need to move my rook away. And I've won the exchange here, and my position is still very good. 
b5 was played, I attack the rook, I played c4, I'm trying to break up the queen side here, and after this move, I, which I had anticipated, um, bishop to d5 was my idea. And yeah, I'm just in exchange up here and was able to convert this position. A nice little tactic, doesn't necessarily have to happen, I could also just trade the queens first. Um, but we get the queens off, I make some luft so that I can threaten to take this pawn, and somehow, some way, uh, what I need to do is just get my rooks on the back rank, and I should be golden here. So I played rook to c1, and when the king came up I gave this check. The opponent had to resign here because you can give up your bishop right away, or if you go here, I'm going to double up and attack this bishop. So, I don't know, I thought this is a, a very cool, interesting opening. It's very, very dangerous if they do decide to allow the double pawn gambit here, starting after d5, queen a5, knight c3. Uh, there's a lot of options, there's a lot of stuff to explore here, so maybe I will make a video on, on all of it at some point here. But I thought that was a really cool game, it was a, really, it was a relatively nice win, and uh, hopefully that gives you guys a little bit of ammo if you're looking for something. What do you guys think about this one? Is this a good way of combating the Sicilian? Let me know below. And please subscribe to the channel if you're interested in these unique openings. That's a lot of what I do. Go check out the channel. There's a ton of unique openings there. And uh, I'll see you guys for another video.